Hello everyone, Mr. Terminal here for Cloud Infrastructure Services. In this video, we are deploying JDS Server Windows on Windows 2016 on AWS. So the link for the marketplace is provided. Please do check that. Continue to subscribe if you already haven't. And then continue the configuration. These defaults are okay. Continue to launch. Launch from easy to. So we are going with free tire and Let's get, let me check security group. RDBT3389 is enabled. Perfect. Review and launch. And yes. For radius, stop, keep here. It's downloaded, launch instances. So we can directly go to easy to instant state is pending, let it run. Perfect, it's a market. So what you want to do is select and connect. And download and remove the file. Once that's done, get a password. Well, until the password is generated, we can look into A file so it would ask you for a password right here so that is what is needed let's try now and it generate a password keep here as with the source for radius so wherever you downloaded your keep error dash that You will get your password, copy it, and you're going to use it in the RDP client. Paste your password here. Okay. Yes. And your windows should start up. Shouldn't take that long and you should have your desktop ready to use. Once you have deployed the server and entered the windows, so what you want to do is you have to configure it for wireless authentication with your Active Directory. So you need to add your server 
to the Active Directory. First, I won't be able to show you that because I don't have an Active Directory set up. After you do that in your Active Directory, then next you want to go to Network Policy Server. You will find an icon right here. Now you need to register your server with the Active Directory, right? Here you go, right click this and register server in Active Directory. It's grayed out for me because I do not have an Active Directory set up. But otherwise you would click here and set it up. Next, what we want to do is create a template for your shared secrets. All of the radius clients that will authenticate with the server will need the shared secret so they can authenticate. So this is very crucial. In the long run, it is easier to create a template with this and to save entering it on each radius client we set up. What we are going to do is exploit, expand the templates management and right click on the new shared secret. Here we can go with any template name. Let me go with company Wi-Fi and stuff. Let's generate this and let me create a new test document to save this. Generate. Copy this. We need this for later process. That's why it's better to save this. Once it's saved, we can go for K. And your secret is saved. Next, under the radius clients and servers, you want to add a new client. And here we are going to. Copy that shared secret. Select the template we created earlier. Right. Let's name it Web Conference. Address or IP, let's go for one night. That should do. And okay, we have our client set up. Repeat this process for as many as client you want. Now that all the radius clients are set up, Let's assume that I only set a one. We need to set up the access policy. But first, you need to make sure you have a certificate in the local computer store. Now, to, uh, you need to add a trusted certificate to the network policy server. So there are three ways to do that. Acquire a certificate from a trusted certificate authority. Implement a public infrastructure and generate a certificate. Or generate a self-signed certificate and turn off client server validation but this is very insecure way of doing it what we want to do is let's create a self-signed certificate first so let's run Our show. Since we are in the PowerShell, we can create new self site. FS is test up local and Certificate for location B anywhere you want. Let's go for local name. Uh, 
probably got a typo. So yeah, we have a certificate now. Once you have the certificate, you can go to run again. And here, go for MMC, Control plus M. Here, go to Certificates. And add Computer Account. Next, and then Finish. Okay, now expand this in the personal photo certificates and you have the one we can. Let's go back to this network policy server. We have to set up the access policy. So here from the drop down list, select wireless server and Wireless or wired connections configure 802.1x. Here you're going to select your wireless connection and let's name it company Wi Fi staff. Right, that should do. Yep. We already have the clients we set up, so we're going to keep that next. And yeah, this is the one you want to pick. And here in configuration, you can add your certificate. And this is the one we created, so we are going to use that. And next. uh user groups are you can specify which domain groups will be given access to the wireless network click add any domain you want group domain groups you would like to add and then just go for next so here you want to add add the details and press okay then next here And that's it. Finish. Our network policy is done, and you will see this under network policies. Here. If you double click it, you can see more details and what it does, and more specifics about it. Under the conditions tab, here you can see what conditions are required to connect to the wireless network. So you're gonna add those groups, right? And only they will be allowed. Press okay. If you want, you can right click and duplicate the policy and use it for some other stuff configure it here and then conditions and add the groups with allow access or deny access either way it will work and it's easy to handle policies like that similar policies so that's good to definitely good to have and good to know yeah that's all on access policy setup for further instructions on setting up various things like Cisco Meraki radius authentications, VLAN tagging options, testing radius from the dashboard, uh, or even to deploy a PEAP wireless profile using GERP policy. Check out the detailed post we have in the description. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.